Hello and welcome, this is Roofmonger, and today is the launch day of Grand Blue Fantasy Versus in North America, and I figure I'd throw together a video showing you the characters of the game, just giving you a brief overview of what everyone is about to help you decide what character you might like to play. So as you can see here, we do have our starting roster. Uh, at the time, there are two characters here that are DLC that I do not have unlocked just yet. Uh, they are not available to me, but we'll be going over the core cast. So with that in mind, there will be timestamps in the video description and in the top pinned comment if you want to skip around to various characters. Uh, but that said here, let's start at the start and let's start with Catalina. So starting with Catalina, I guess you could say Catalina is sort of like your Ryu, if you will, like Ryu from Street Fighter. As she kind of has that move set, and she's definitely good at pretty much everything in the game. Uh, she does have, you know, basic fireballs to be sure. Uh, she has dragon punches here. She has the uppercut and it's invincible, just like you know the dragon punches, right? She doesn't quite have the hurricane kick, but she does have her kind of thrusting stab here. Also, if you are familiar with Street Fighter, uh, she has something very akin to the focus attack in Street Fighter 4 with her trait. So she can hold it here, and it has armor, as you can see here. And she can release and go from there. And she can cancel the hit into a dash, just like a focus attack as well. And if it is held for long enough, it will be a crumple, just like a focus attack. So if you're looking for someone who's just kind of good at everything, I think Catalina is her character. She has really good range here. She has very good options for screen control. Uh, her air options are really good. Her jumping S is one heck of a cross, up to say the least. Uh, so all in all, she's kind of got everything you want in a character, and she's just kind of good at everything. So can't go wrong with Catalina, honestly. Now for Gran. And you might notice, hey, Gran, the game's called Gran Blue. He's kind of the protagonist of the mobile so game. Uh, so Gran, uh, we mentioned that earlier for Catalina. If Catalina is the Ryu, like the Street Fighter comparison, then Gran is the Ken. So he has the fireball, yes, you know, multiple versions, of course. He has the uppercut, and just like uh, Catalina, it is invincible as well. Uh, but Gran is a much more aggressive character than Catalina. Catalina wants to play it a little more safe. Gran wants to get in there, and of course, Gran is the master of the boot. And uh, if you're not aware of the power of the boot, uh, let me show you very quickly here. So say we uh, turn on frame advantage, it kind of has easy frame advantage in showing the colors, dictating you know if you have advantage or disadvantage and we'll set it to block everything. So if we're red, we're negative. If we're yellow, we're even. And if we space that boot correctly, it's our turn. We have the advantage. So Gran, when he is roughly the right distance to hit at that tip of that boot, it's always gonna be his turn. That's a pretty big key point of his offense. And yet you can't really contest the boot. You can play around it, but the boot's going to do what the boot's going to do. And if you block it at the right distance, it's still his turn and he's going to blender you. As for his trait, it's a chargeable move. He actually builds power here. And when uh, the power is maxed, the move he can do from it is vicious as it's a full invincible massive slash that you can do a lot with combo-wise and all that kind of stuff. Uh, also, interestingly enough, you can partially store charges. So hitting uh, one of the light, medium, or attack buttons while you're charging We'll just partially store charges here, and you can store all the way to level five partial charge, and then go from there. So you can just kind of slowly build it up over the course of a match. But yeah, Gran, uh, once again, good all rounder. Uh, the boot is god. The boot is lord. The boot is everything. It's the best move. Um, he's a very strong character. Good for beginners as well. Uh, very easy to understand. He's pretty aggressive. And once again, you know he's got a little bit of basics like fireballs and uppercuts uh, that everyone loves. So if you're a beginner, hey, you could not go wrong hurt. picking Grant. Zeta is a very interesting character, one with a lot of screen control. Uh, she has good normals here, like that's her stand medium, and it has pretty respectable range, as you can see here. Uh, she likes to control the screens in a lot of ways, not the least, obviously, is with her special moves. Uh, probably the most signature of her special moves is what we call the Spear of Arvis. As a Spear of Arvis, it just lets you go crazy. Um, you have your initial rusher with your spear forward, and on the ground it can be forward forward and button, or down down, which will go up in the air. And once you connect, you can uh, do a second follow up in any of the eight directions your D-pad or arcade stick will let you do. So I can do, say, another full run, you know, get a little bit of a combo. Or say, uh, if I got blocked and I don't like it, I can just say, no, jet backwards and get out of there, right? And the X version will let you go up to three times as well. 
So that is certainly one of her main things, but that's of course not the only thing she has. Another state is uh, she is actually a pretty solid projectile character. She has a true beam. Uh, the beam uh, is pretty good against other projectiles as well. As you can see here, it easily covers the majority of the screen. She can also hold it here with the medium version to delay and just throw people off their timing. She also has some defensive properties as she has a bit of a counter series here. Uh, so she can go high or low, or conversely, you want to burn the X and you get everything. And she's armored while doing it, and she has follow-ups. Now, you don't actually have to block a move to get the follow-ups, which is good, uh, as uh, some of them, especially the heavy version, is like actually a launcher, and it can get a lot of stuff from there, as you can see here. And that was her trait, her little uh, Chun-Li-style pogo hops. Her trait, uh, if you're a fan of E-Honda or Aquaman and Injustice, this will be immediately familiar to you. Uh, the Trident Rush here. So you can end a lot of block strings with this and just be safe and push out a bit. Um, and conversely, if you don't have any cooldowns to burn on various CX moves or whatever, it's certainly solid enough as just a combo ender and gets some extra damage here, as it does respectable enough damage. But yeah, one of her things is, once again, really good screen, and she can just play a weird offense that a lot of characters can't, because she can attack from weird angles in the screen other characters simply cannot contest. Uh, thanks to the Spear of Arvis, you can get some really cool stuff. In fact, even unless you get crazy setups in the corner, so, somewhat basic combo here. And thanks to the power of the Spear of Arvis, not only did we manage to combo the enemy up, we also managed to go all the way back down to the ground, land in time, and then recombo into our super, right? So these are some of the fun things that are available to her. Once again, really good all-rounder and just a lot of flair and sass. So, Vasaraga. Vasaraga is our representative for the big body archetype in fighting games. As you can see, he's uh, quite a bit larger than the other characters. And with that comes stuff like, hey, big normals, right? And of course, armor can have, you know, big body without armor, right? And that's actually Vasaraga's trait. So he activates the Soul Forge, and when he has these beautiful little particle effects around him, it gives the majority of his special moves and held heavy attacks armor, and specifically two hits of armor. So. Vasaraga can play around like a tank when he has the trait up. Now, speaking of moves here, uh, Vasaraga does have a grapple, like a command grab, although there is a more dedicated grappler in the game, which we'll get to later on. And it's all about movement and just space control with things like shoulder charges. Also, it doesn't have a traditional fireball in the regular sense here. Uh, think of it like a ground spark like King of Fighters here. It goes partly across the screen here. It's more for a like, kind of basic neutral control rather than trying to zone the enemy out. So, you know, also really good in various combo structures. And of course we got the stance. So Vasaraga enters this stance here and can move forward while doing it as well. And Vasaraga has a lot of options here. Uh, from this here, we have this move here that's plus on block. So it's your turn if it's blocked, but you can duck it. Uh, we have this move here, a low, and it's a very long range low as you can tell here. Uh, it can hit for quite a distance. <laughs> distance, right. Uh, we have this move here with our trade button, which is armored even without your trade up. Uh, and this move is holdable, as you can see here. And actually, all moves are holdable, just so you know. And the heavy version here is a nice little dunk. And if it is held to as well, then we can get some combo structure from it. So having this up here is going to be tricky a lot uh, for the enemy. And once again, you can just walk forward and attack. Or, heck, you can even... Do something like enter the stance, not do anything, then cancel it right into your command grab, as you can see here. So it struggles away, and a lot of the big characters struggle in fighting games, uh, and that moves are very slow, and when someone's on top of you, it's kind of hard to deal with it. But yeah, for the most part, you know, a lot of big buttons, a lot of big boy moves, and heck of a lot of super armor. So if you like these things, Vasaraga is your character. So, Lancelot. We just came off Vasaraga, big slow character. And Lancelot's legitimately as far as away from that as you can get. As Lancelot is the speedster and the mix up character. First up here, let's just show off the trade here because it'll say a lot in a little. So, here's your basic trade activation, which is a ground slide, which isn't much in and of itself, but it can be cancelled into many things. Not the least of which is hey, oh, here's a little bit of a fake out. Hey, oh, let's uh, just switch sides here, you know completely, you know, do some left-right shenanigans, or conversely, screw it all, and we'll just go in the air, and now is a jumping cross-up, right? So, all these kind of techniques and more, Lancelot has all sorts of mobility and all sorts of way to mix you up. 
Uh, even has wall jumps and all that kind of stuff as traditional to an agile style character. And as for the actual moveset itself here, um, one of the things about Lancelot is Lancelot has a very slow projectile and not designated to win like a fireball war, but more like, hey, I'm going to run behind it. And then while you're dealing with it, then I'm going to do something about it. It could be, you know, just basic pressure, maybe some sort of gimmick or attempt at a cross up or whatever, right? Uh, there's bad intentions behind these very slow fireballs. As you can see here, so he can just use it as a shield basically on his way in. Also on top of that, uh, once again, speaking with aggression here, uh, he does have a rushing style move as you can see here. And also has a Rekka series, uh, meaning you only do one move unless you do the follow-ups here. Uh, so it just helps with combo structure and that kind of stuff. And once again, even more style to teleport. So which is, this is different than this teleport. Uh, you can do it by itself. You can also hold it, just so you know. And you'll kind of do a dunk on uh, coming down to the ground here, uh, which does have some use for combo structure. But yeah, uh, between all these like teleports, you know, potential cross up stuff here, uh, you know, left, right stuff and just general shenanigans. Lancelot, if you're looking to be tricky, fast and open people up, this is the character for it. So Matera is an archer and as you might expect from an archer, certainly more of a range style of offense and there's definitely a lot to work with that. Uh, from, you know, basic arrow shots and they come in high and low varieties to be sure here. Even Stan Heavy is an arrow shot. This is just a normal, right? So I can like special cancel that into a different style arrow shot. So there's a lot to work with. Uh, but on top of the, just these green troll from the usual arrows, like uh, we also have aerial arrows that also cover a lot of different types of uh, screen that the normal arrows don't do. Uh, we have the arrow shower where she'll shoot the arrow in a set point of the screen and it will just rain down from there. So while you're trying to navigate the usual stuff here, now you have to worry about like certain parts of the screen being eaten up. She is definitely a master of zoning and screen control. And that's not all. So another layer just to help with screen control is the butterflies. So the butterflies, they're just on the screen and they don't do anything in and of themselves. Uh, but what happens if you hit it with an arrow is it'll create a giant pillar. And that pillar hits everything up and down below it. So say you have a butterfly on top of the enemy, right? Of course, it will detonate as well and help with combo structure and all that to be sure. But it's just another era, just another way to do screen control. Especially if you do the EX version and you have multiples to work with here. I uh, can create a lot of pillars and just a lot of extra threats on the screen. And also the trait. Uh, her trait is basically a hop. And you can do it in the air as well. Uh, air mobility in this game is a lot more like, say, a Street Fighter than, you know, uh, other Arc System game, uh, works games like Guilty Gear or Dragon Ball Fighters. Uh, air mobility is rare and she has it. So uh, if you want to, like, jump away, run away, and, you know, just zone, 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 it definitely helps in that way. Also on offense, because it is a short hop, it is a source of easy quick overheads, as you can see here, and just that kind of stuff. So if you're looking for a good high-low offense as well, hey, she has it as well. Uh, so... Generally speaking, she's more of a keep away character, but thanks to her trait uh, being the short hop, she can also go to offense in a pinch. So, Charlotta. Charlotta is basically a bulldog. Uh, she just gets in and makes stuff happen. As you can tell by being a little person here at the range, not so much. <laughs> uh, her jump is also uh, very shallow, as you can see here. So she wants to get in and stay in. But you know what? To that point, she can do stuff. Uh, one person actually described her as E Honda from Street Fighter meets Akuma from Street Fighter. And I actually find that very apt. So she does have charge based moves here. So you have to hold backwards and then hit forward on a button here. Uh, so similar to, say, Honda's uh, sumo headbutt. And that also is somewhat apt as she just charges forward. Um, she has a charge down move and attack here. And that's kind of like Honda's uh, butt stomp because uh, she goes up and then comes back down just like Honda. She has her sword flurry move here. And the sword flurry move, by the way, the EX version is plus on block. It is your turn if they block it. And that's kind of like 100 hand slaps. So you see where I'm going with this, right? And uh, somewhat importantly here, uh, she has Akuma's demon flip. So if you do nothing here, it just is empty in the low, just like Akuma. Uh, if you hit light here, you dive down. If you hit medium, you come down straight away here, just like diving down on the enemy. And if you hit heavy, it is a throw. <laughs> uh, so yeah, varied offense to be sure. Once again, she's the kind of character that'll just like get her teeth into you and then just be on you for the rest of the match, right? Uh, her unique trait here is a parry. 
So in and of itself, it doesn't do too much here, but if you call out an attack, then you can parry and then punish from there. But yeah, the name of the game is Offense and Pressure with this little dynamo. So Lediva is the dedicated big grappler of the game. So directly comparable to say like a Zangief in more ways than one, uh, as it definitely has a spinning pile driver as you can see. Uh, so Lediva, her main style of offense is grapples to be sure. So she has a traditional spinning pile driver style move to be sure. Uh, also an aerial version, so she can grab you out of the air. And also an anti-air version to stop people who are jumping a bit too much. And on top of that, so we have the Grappler Headbutt. Uh, and this move does clash against projectiles, by the way. So if a fireball kind of connects against a headbutt, the headbutt will defeat the fireball. And this is uh, usable for combos, usable for pressure, as it can be plus on block if the improperly defend against here, the slower version especially. Uh, if you block it, hey, still your turn. And then you're scared to hit buttons here because you'll lose if Lediva hits a button. And if you're scared to hit buttons, oh, you get grappled again, right? And so it begins the cycle. And speaking of that kind of same theory here, the Lariat. The Lariat is also plus on block. Uh, the one thing to note though, the Lariat is duckable. So if the character ducks, it'll just go clear over the head, but otherwise if it hits, hey, awesome. And if it's blocked, hey, awesome, because it's still your turn. As for the trait, Lediva does a running grab. Uh, it is a little modular. Uh, it wall bounces, as you can see here, but say if you're like very far away from the corner, it's not gonna get you too much, as you can tell here. But you can also toss the enemy directly up into the air with a button press, as you can see here. And that has a lot of different combo potential and a lot of other applications that we use for. So if you love grabbing fools, this is your character to say the least. Also, I've not really been mentioning the supers or anything, but Lediva does have one of the best regular Skybound arts. Uh, it's a fully invincible rushing punch. And also, the uh, animations are gorgeous. By the way, speaking of gorgeous animations, I suppose I should show you the super to end all supers. As you can, it's just something else if you have not seen this guy. Uh, here comes the ref. Two, oh, kick out. Oh, well, that's a shame, right? But yeah, if you love grappling, if you love pro wrestling, hey, this is the character for you. So Fairy is definitely a range style character, but also with some pressure and some gimmicks. Uh, so Fairy has the whip and hey, you're generally gonna be fighting at the range of your whip. That's definitely what's gonna be helping you. And she has a lot of specials and all that kind of stuff that certainly help with that. Uh, she has a multi-layered trait system here. If you're on the ground, uh, she just does her basic kind of hit here and uh, has higher than average chip damage. Uh, if you're jumping, uh, she does a drill attack very similar to Dalsum from Street Fighter, the Yoga Mummy, and the Yoga Drill. And conversely, you can just hit up in your trait, and you're swinging from the skies. Uh, so you can get a lot of extra air mobility. Uh, so yeah, with all that, once again, great range options. Even this like basic stand H, oh my god. Like, look at that, that's crazy, right? That's so good. Um, she also has the pressure we talked about here. So she can summon her familiar, and the familiar will just kind of activate into place after a moment and do a lot of extra hits. So while you're blocking, hey, you gotta deal with all those hits. And of course, if it hits, all the better yet for you, right? And thanks to uh, some universal systems here, like the universal dodge and all that, you can toss out your buddy here and do stuff like right before he activates, switch sides, and then, hey, that's a cross up. So if you like the Dalsum style of play, you know, long range normals, uh, weird mobility options, and just generally zoning out and frustrating your enemy with a bunch of pressure too, because once again here, uh, sending out your little friend here and having them do their thing is really strong. Uh, and also the X version as well, they'll just run to you no matter where they are on the screen and then detonate from there. This is a good character. And unlike the usual archetype in the history of fighting games, these characters tend to have bad defense. Uh, Fairy has a full invincible reversal here, um, so she even has good defense shoring up one of the weaknesses this archetype usually has. So yeah, if you like screen control and you like pressure, this is your character. So Percival is definitely an oddball character. He's one of the characters that isn't as easily uh, able to fit into a predefined archetype as many of the other characters uh, in this game can because he's built around the charge system. So he builds these little charges here, and then he can expend these charges to turbocharge a medium or a heavy version of a special move. 
So say we take a basic, uh, oh, I just thought that flame, honestly, because it's very similar to Saul's move in Guilty Gear. Uh, but that's the light version here. This is the medium version. And if we take a charge and we burn it on the medium version, well, hey, as you can see here, it went full screen. So the charge gives this move a lot more value. And he also has stuff like, you know, uppercuts. And once again, too, as well, say we take a charge here and we do a medium or heavy version of an uppercut, the charge will take its place and just basically makes it better. Um, one thing I'll very quickly note here, uh, his trait is uh, very unique. It's a command grab, straight up. Uh, however, of the other characters that have command grabs, this is definitely like the least of them, as the range is uh, more than a little anemic, as you can see here. You can't even connect from this far away. Uh, but mid-screen, you basically get a quick little hit, but in the corner, you can definitely get better combos. So one of the most unique things about Percival is his command dash, and he has a few options from it. First of which is just a very quick load. And uh, just so you know here, the medium and heavy versions of the dash will burn charges as well, and they basically make the moves better. Uh, the next follow-up here, besides the low, is the medium. And now I know this looks like an overhead. This reads like your brain's probably screaming at you, hey, this move has to be block standing. Well, no, actually it doesn't. But what it is, is plus on block. So if the enemy blocks this move, it is your turn decidedly. You get to dictate the pace. And the heavy version is a quick poke. It comes up quite a bit faster than, say, the overhead. So if they try to smash buttons or something, then you can deal with them. Also, uh, one of the things about Percival here is he does have very good range, all things considered. As here, this is stand heavy. And you can hit from a pretty good range, as you can tell. Not everyone in this game has fantastic range, right? So the fact that he has pretty workable range, uh, especially on the mediums and the heavies, is definitely a nice little tool to work with. So once again, very odd character. Uh, since he's not as easily identifiable in an archetype like so many others, I would say he's probably not the most beginner friendly of all of the characters. But still, if you like him, hey, he's Flame Knight. So you just kind of go from there. So, Loane is definitely one of the most unique characters in this game, to say the least. And with that, I guess he's a little more difficult to understand than average. But uh, one thing here, like he can throw his brothers at you. Uh, that first one here, the light brother call, that is a low. Uh, the second brother call, however, despite looking like an overhead, as he does a flying body leap here, uh, that one you can just block crouching, that's fine. Uh, and if you want to enhance it there, EX version, you can just call both of them. And then, you know, you can do stuff like your own universal overhead with the low and... There's just a lot of options to work with, right? Uh, there's a lot of weird stuff. And speaking of weird stuff here, uh, we also have the Catalina bot. Uh, so this is one of the things you can summon is a robot version of Catalina, who is one of the other playable characters. Uh, and the only logic I can think of is the fact that, uh, going by his win quotes, every fight Loane is in didn't actually happen. He's just telling a story. But yeah, we have punchy robots. We have laser robots. We got uh, robots that shoot all sorts of missiles. Like, there's a lot of stuff to work with here uh, for this character. It's certainly very unique in that regard. Also, stuff uh, like this, you know, counters, parries, the X, uh, the X parry counters, everything high and low. Uh, we do have kind of a basic rush attack. But also, let's talk about the supers. So, the human pyramid attack. Um, while this is happening, Loane is 100% armor. There's nothing you can do to stop him other than if you kill him. That's it. This has to happen. There's no way out. Uh, and with that said, uh, it's definitely a very unique super to say the least, right? And that's just the regular super. So if we go into our super skybound art, we just become Lady Galactus, basically. And uh, <laughs> as you can see here, Lady Galactus got some moves. Not the least of which is that Flora's Lava move, which is a true unblockable, by the way. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, Luane's got some stuff. And there you have it. So that's just a brief idea on every character, just giving you a taste of what the character is about. That said, Grand Blue Fantasy, once again, is now out in North America. So please enjoy. It's a pretty fun game. And that is it for this video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. Go out and play some Grand Blue.